with you Ida Field House, the Union Bank Court for game two of our Division Three semifinal action this evening. Second game, the Fairview Apache, the day of a 19-4 record, and they will play the Alexander Lady Titans. They are 20 and 3. Much time Evan Skillinger here. Evan, how about the Fairview Apaches? Uh, they have a, a one-point loss to OG way back in early December. They've had a very nice year. They won the GMC Conference this year. Your, your, your thoughts on the Fairview Apaches? I'll tell you what, this is a team that can score buckets. Kerry Z. Dyke, 1,000-point scorer, averages 15 and a half points this year. But Kelly Kreitz and Allison Rhodes both with 14 points per game themselves. So these are they have a lot of different scoring options. Z Dyke has been a force for Fairview for four years. She's a four-year letter winner or will be after this year. A fantastic player, well-rounded as well. She's not the biggest on the floor, but she averages the most rebounds at uh, 4.7. She also has a two-to-one assist ratio, so she can definitely move the basketball, leads this team in assists. And just a fantastic player. I'm really looking forward to watching her tonight. And I know for a fact that the Titans are going to want to keep her away from the rim. Yeah, there uh, we talk about the Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans. They're, they're down a couple players this evening due to, to illness. And that's kind of affected some of the things that Troy Yant wants to do tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Kaylin Grothaus out tonight. Uh, she averages 7.7 .7 points. And Emma Brinkman out as well, a role player for this Titans team that puts in some great minutes off the bench. So they are definitely missing a few key players, but they still have a lot of great players on the floor that will be playing tonight. Katie Kaufman is definitely one of them, someone Fairview is going to have to contend with. She's the leading scorer on this team, 10 points, also averages right around five rebounds a game. And it's going to be tough for Fairview to match up with her. Ke Kelly Kreitz for Fairview, their best interior defender, 17 blocks this year, four rebounds a game. She does a nice job inside, but she gives up two inches. Uh, right, right, Katie Kaufman, six foot one. Kelly Kreitz at five foot eleven. But you also look across the board. I mean, there are so many great players. Caitlin Kimmett averages seven point six points a game. Carson Erford, a great ball handler for Ottawa Glendorf, six or nine point three points. Also can move the rock, and so both these teams can attack you from a lot of different angles. And like you said earlier this year, just a one point loss for Fairview, one of their four losses on the year. So this is going to be a really, really great matchup. And I'll tell you what, I've seen Fairview in this gym quite a few times. They haven't been able to make it past this district. Their last district title was 2005. And so they're really hoping that they can leverage some of these great scorers, carry z -Dyke's great career, and continue that career tonight. Let's go through the starting lineups for Fairview. They are 19 and four. They average 60 points a game. They give up just 30. They will start number three, Bethany Singer. She's a 5'3 junior at three and a half points per game. Carrie Zedike, 5'3 senior, 15 points per game for her. 16 is Kelly Kreitz, 5'11 junior at 14 points. She also averages four assists. Allison Rhodes wears number 20. She's a 5'10 senior, 14.9 and just under six boards. And Haley Hammer wears number 34. She's a 5'7 junior at 5.7. Ottawa Glendorf, 20 and three. They average 55.4. They give up 37.7. They will go with the Number three, Carson Erford, she's a 5'9 freshman, averaging 9.3 points per game. 12 is Lily Hazelman, 5'4 senior, 3.3 points per game for her. 32 is Caitlin Kimmett, she's a 5'10 sophomore, 7.6. 34, Katie Kaufman, 6' foot junior, averaging 10 points and 5 boards a game. And number four, 45 is Chloe Glenn, she is a 5'11 senior, she averages 8.4 points per game. The winner will be back here on Saturday afternoon. They will play Delphus Jefferson, a 49-36 winner over Allen East. That will be a 2 o'clock game here on Saturday, and it will air on Sunday evening on WOSN. We've taken through the pregame activity. We'll have this, the tip-off coming up right after this. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. With the Elida Fieldhouse, it's Division Three District Semifinal Action. Our scoreboard tonight is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of Structure Pergola X, Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, Seamless Spouting. Mark Shine and Evan Skilleter here this evening. We're going through our starting lineups, our officials this evening. Hannah Keller, Tyson Schnitke, and Dylan Woods. And uh, as we were going through our pregame event, I think one thing we ought to mention, you talked about the one-point win that Ottawa Glandorf had, 59-58, way back on December 3rd. The leading score for that night was Kaitlyn Kimmett, uh, Kaitlyn Grothaus, and she is not playing. She had 18 points in that game, and she is out ill tonight. She have a couple of players, her and Emma Brinkman, in street clothes this evening. 
Yeah, we'll have to see what happens and how Ottawa Glendorf steps up in this game. Again, like you said, missing a couple of key role players, but still some of the players you expect to do the heavy lifting, at least on the offensive and defensive end, are still on the court. What, one of the things I would really look at is Coach uh, Yant really likes to play a lot of bodies and just keep fresh people out kind of coming at you in waves. And so we've taken a couple of those people out of that this evening, and we'll see how that matches up. Number 34 in the Jenner Center Jump Circle, that's Katie Kaufman. And she is matched up with Kelly Kreitz, and we're underway. Carson Erford with the basketball, and she gives it up to Kimmett. Hazelman, and we work the perimeter. Man to man defense by the team wearing black. That's Fairview. Challenging Carson Erford to shoot the ball from outside. Ball's tipped by Erford after she did a rebound opportunity. Went to Singer. This is Zedike throwing the ball ahead to Rhodes. Zedike and Hazelman matched up out front, and now the pass goes to Kreitz. And the ball's tipped loose and Sliding into the bleachers, making great efforts. Chloe Glenn, the 5'10 senior, but it will stay with Fairview Apaches from the Green Meadows Conference. Chloe Glenn, definitely an inspiration, a player that's battled through a lot of injuries, spent time on the bench, and still contributing at a high level for Ottawa Glendorf despite, I mean, you can see on the legs, she's got two leg braces, and uh, still that hustle diving into the bleachers early on in this game. That's that's big time and a, a, a huge leader Rhodes goes up off glass and scores That's Kreitz, excuse me 14 uh, Score sheet incorrect. She has the first basket of the game Kreitz and Rose both shooting over 50% from the field this Season so two very good players like to get the ball inside Left-handed shot will not fall inside for Katie Kaufman Here's Zedike headed the other way. Crossover dribble. Passes a little bit high, but Singer tracks it down in Zedike. That shot goes. It's a three ball. I had to look to see what the official called. Kreitz has 37 of those on the season now. 40% three-point shooter. Not someone mm. you want to leave open outside, no doubt. Really nice find right there and a good look. Erford accepts a screen from Hazelman. Hazelman goes to the rim and scores. Hazelman, Hazelman, very athletic. Nice job right there, catching the ball and going immediately before her defender had a chance to even get her feet set. Got right to the bucket and everyone had their back turned. Zedek wanted to pull up and could not. Instead, she passed the ball down inside and going to the rim was Allison Rhodes, who will draw contact from a Titan. Katie Kaufman picks up her first foul. We'll head to the free throw line for Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. They are in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken where home style happens here. Free throw good, Allison Rhodes. Rhodes is a 75% free throw shooter. And right there, Kaufman did a nice job getting a full poem on the ball. If you looked at just the top of that shot, definitely all ball, but got that elbow connection and, and drew the foul that way. Kimmett gets the rebound. We'll go the other way with Katie Kaufman. She will hand off to Erford. 6-2 early on. Boy, they really packing it down inside. They're going to dare the Titans to shoot from the perimeter. They got it down low, they did, to Katie Kaufman. She gets her own rebound. This will be a push shot that will go up from the perimeter by Caitlin Kimmett, and she has a three. Big shot right there from Kimmett. Under 30% from outside so far this year, but a good looking shot right there. Her 22nd three point field goal of the year cuts the Fairview lead to one. Here's Singer to the free throw line area. And now Rhodes going baseline. Stolen. Good defensive pressure that time. Puts the ball into the hands of the Titans, and they're going to go the other way. It's a good awareness play right there from Aldrich. Bounced out, good look that time by Carson Erford. Zedike with the basketball. Like you said, it seems like Fairview's content giving up those open looks for three. They want them to shoot. They want to make sure they're guarding the paint. Zedike goes to the rim and will draw a foul and score. That's going to be two against Kaufman as well. That's a big time rim defender. That's probably going to have to take a seat here for a little bit. 
Katie Kaufman does pick up her second. She's the only player in the game to have a foul right now. And checking into the game will be number 30, Carly Brinkman, and also number 45, Chloe Glenn, back into the game. Seedike shoots 72% from the free throw line. It's a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. Dead center with that one. She's got three points early on. That was a great finish as well. She had to go up amongst the trees and somehow able to get that into the basket. She shoots 50% from the field this season. So, again, a lot of high percentage shooters for Fairview. Erford gets to the rim, and she will draw a foul. This will be the first Fairview patchy of foul, and it goes on Bethany Singer. Carson Erford is a 64% free throw shooter. Referee's pretty quick to blow the whistle here early, so we'll have to see if both these teams adjust and try to draw contact on shots. She's 64%. She averages 9.3 points per game. Was second team all-conference in the Western Buckeye League. Goes in a little, out a little bit hard. It's a three-point lead for the Apaches. Nice bounce pass down inside and going up strong to finish through contact was Kreitz. That's a tough finish right there. Good job by Kreitz absorbing that contact. It would have finished nicely. And again, Zedike, nice penetrate. Nice job Kreitz dumping has, it off. Has seven of the 11 Apache points in the game. And a quick move into the goal. And boy, that one spun out as well by Michael Aldridge. A couple of tough luck opportunities the last couple of possessions for the Titans. Rhodes gets a three look. That's hard, but Singer hustles into the rebound. And then Erford steals it from her. Aldridge bounce pass down inside, making a move as Chloe Glenn, but she's doubled up. But the pass goes, and it's up in the hands of Carly Brinkman who finishes. It was a really nice job by Brinkman. Cutting to the basket right there. Her defender left to go double team Glenn. She just cut to the basket wide open. Zedike for three. Hard rebound comes to Brinkman. Not technically an air ball like the OG fans are shouting. But you know, definitely that's the boys Boyle. basketball team. You would think they would have at least some concept of what an air ball really is. Well, Ottawa Glandorf <laughs> has never seen well, one. Well, that's so true. That, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Hazelman bounce pass in the lane in traffic. Titans keep possession of the basketball. Erford gets a three look. It bounces around, rebound goes to the Titans, and they're going to get a foul opportunity. Who was that to secure the rebound? Looks like it went to Brinkman again. She's had making her presence felt. She's been working really hard yes, inside has. with Kaufman on the bench. Foul called against Rhodes, just her first. So Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw, and that one gets a kind bounce for point three for her. Back into the game, Caitlin Kimmett. And also in for the first time is Megan Horstman. Megan wears one number four, she's a 5'5 five, five sophomore. <laughs> Offensive rebound comes down to Caitlin Kimmett. Chance to measure a three that will not go in. And Rhodes goes against the rebound under traffic. Still on the air ball topic over here to our right. Good defensive pressure by Brinkman forced the ball to come loose, and Chloe Glenn will bring it up. Brinkman heads to the glass. The pass goes out of balance. Did she push it there? She did under defensive pressure. It's a good job not giving up the baseline. That was Kelly Kreitz right there cutting Brinkman off and forcing that bad pass. Now full court look from the Titans trying to push the tempo a little bit. Almost six minutes into this one. Hazelman, who's going to spend a lot of time getting to know Kerry Zedike this evening, don't you think? Yeah, I think you're right. Hazelman's a great defender. Always draws the toughest assignment. Good check out on the rebound inside that time by Horseman. And Chloe Glenn gets the rebound. She will throw it ahead to Hazelman. Opening on the skip pass. Decided to keep it on this end of the floor. Here it goes. 
Horseman had a shot opportunity, turned it down. They get a better shot opportunity by going inside, but a lot of traffic and we'll get a foul. As Chloe Glenn tried to spin into the lane. And Haley Hammer just slid over right there as Glenn was attacking the basket, kind of slid underneath her and drew that foul, just her first. Three different players have a single foul for the Apaches this evening. Russell Z. Dykes team, Hazelman to inbound. Pass goes on top to Kimmett. Hazelman throws it inside to Glenn, who muscles up and scores. Good catch and good finish. Yeah, that's a tough pass, too. Just a little window for Hazelman to throw it through. Kreitz throws it down into the corner of Rhodes. Baseline move, cut off by Glenn. And did she throw it out of bounds, or was it tipped? It was tipped. Kimmett got a hand on it. We're tied at 11 with 63 seconds to go, opening eight minutes. Singer. This is Rhodes, and laying off her a bit. She's going to baseline dribble anyway. And Hazelman steps in and forces a turnover to Glenn. Glenn succeeds to getting all, oh, and then she had to bounce it off a leg, and then it eventually went off of her. How many times have we seen Lily Hazelman come from nowhere uh -huh. just to take away a pass right there? She's playing at the top. She recognized, again, when, when someone goes baseline, normally they're looking to pass the ball across the court. Hazelman, the high IQ play, came down, took away that passing lane. It's the replays that are sponsored by Beckman Jewelers, made possible by Beckman Jewelers. Let us help you discover the perfect gift of love, affection, and appreciation. Inbounding this time, Kelly Kreitz and Seedike. Here's the lob inside. Good help on the backside. Megan Horseman forced that turnover. It's a good job staying straight up and down, too. It was hit out of bounds. Did Z-Dyke hit it? it? It was. I wasn't sure whether a Titan got a hand on it, too. Good job by the officiating crew yeah. right there. The guy underneath took a look, didn't quite know what was going on, looked up to hand of Keller and made the call. Oh, left-handed finish, tried to finish inside. Horseman got another rebound. Erford makes that shot. Carson Erford with three points in the opening quarter gives her team a two-point lead. Z-Dyke, this time she's matched up out front with Carly Brinkman. High ball screen. Z-Dyke trying to get loose from Brink, but there's a nice pass inside, and Rhodes will go up to score, and she draws a foul. Good recognition from Aldridge. She, she slid over just like you're supposed to. She was just a little bit late getting to that spot. Michael Aldridge picks up her first foul. Rhodes to the free throw line. She missed a couple of moments ago, but not that time. My high school coach, Coach Todd Bob, would be proud of that form right there. Form shooting, kept the elbow in. You don't have to put both hands on the ball yeah. when you can do it like that. He's got his team playing in this gym tomorrow night, doesn't he? Yeah, big win and double overtime over Double Alanis. overtime, great basketball game last night. If you were just a fan and didn't care who won or lost, it was a great basketball game. Kind of a heartfelt loss for the Alanis Mustangs and a great win for it. Bluffton Pirates, Let's see if they can get a shot. Erford goes the length of the floor, her shot goes in! Carson Erford, Erford plays buzzer beater. She gets points four and five, and that will put her team up two as we go to the break. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergle X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of alts, seamless spouting. Buzzer beater Carson Erford puts her team up two. She had five in the opening quarter. Four other Titans scored seven points in the opening quarter for Kelly Kreitz. Yeah, very balanced scoring effort so far for Ottawa Glandorf, a team, again, we talk about it all the time. They move the ball so well. No one cares on that team who scores as long as they get the job done. Always fun to watch Tori Ant's team play. Zedek Hazelman's got her again, as she did for most of the first half. First, Opa, first quarter. And now Kelly Kreitz didn't score the game. Zedek gets a three look. Good check out inside. 
I'll tell you, Carly Brinkman has played really well in the, in the time period she's been in the basketball game. Absolutely. A couple rebounds, a couple nice attacks as well. We've seen her play well off the ball. She's going to get some free throws and get some offensive boards as well. Whether well, Darren Hazelman to shoot the basketball from out there, but also giving her lanes to pass through. She's another one of those unselfish players. She knows that's not really her shot. Chloe Glenn muscles up inside. She gets her third and fourth point and pushes the lead to four. Kreitz in a hurry. Zedike tries to get to the rim. I think Kimmick got a hand on it. But Fairview secures the rebound. Rhodes couldn't track down a high pass that came from Kelly Kreitz. T-Bird sub in. Yeah, it comes Mike Aldridge back in the game, the 5'8 junior. Kaufman still on the bench for the Titans, but they're doing well without her. Katie picked up a couple of fouls early. Herford's looking inside. They're really trying to surround them down inside to keep the ball out of the hands of Chloe Glenn. Look inside right to Glenn. There. Yep, they brought two people out, one off of Hazelman. Hazelman's got a three look and turned it down. Mike Aldridge in the corner. And really no reason to shoot it. You're up four anyway. What a pass That's inside. Cool. Chloe Glenn ends up with a basket out of. And guess who passed it to her? Emma Brinkman with a good look. Catches, passes. Such a nice job. Singer gets a three. And when short, Hazelman comes and gets it. Titans trying to build on a six-point lead. Glenn again inside and chores again. Chloe Glenn with eight. That's her average on the season. She says, I'm tired and I can understand why. She's playing hard. She just rim ran and got a basket. Absolutely. All the way up the floor. She's playing defense underneath the basket down here, too. So that's a long way to run. She finishes, like you said, eight points. Her season average. Doing a great job underneath. Fairview with a patient possession. They need a basket right here. This is Kreitz. And now Zedike trying to get away from Hazelman. She gets picked up. Mike Aldridge tips it loose. They're going to throw it up to Glenn again. She's got enough energy to run this one down and finish with the left hand. She's got 10. Timeout. OG on a run. They're up by 10. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back on Elida, where tonight our instant replays are made possible by Beckman Jewelers in Ottawa. Let us help you discover the perfect gift of love, affection, or appreciation. And that we got an instant replay of Chloe Glenn running down the floor right there. That young lady said, I'm out, I'm tired. And she said, nope, I got enough energy to go chase that one down, Evan. Well, she's been great, 10 points so far tonight, but so many contributions from other Titans all over the place, not necessarily in the scoring column. We've seen Michael Aldrich drop back, high IQ plays, cutting off some passing lanes, winning some extra possessions. We've seen Carly Brinkman make some nice passes, some offensive rebounds. Again, this, this Titans squad is so, they, their chemistry is so good. They're just so happy when one of their teammates does well, but it's all fed from everyone else doing their job elsewhere. Hence the timeout from Coach Zedek, and there'll be a foul out front that will go against Micah Aldridge. The Micah has picked up her second foul as well. We've played uh, better than two and a half minutes, and only one person on either team has scored in quarter number two, and her name is Chloe Glenn. Kreitz with the basketball. If Fairview you get something going here. Kreitz goes to the rim, left it short. Under pressure, gets her own rebound and scores. Good hustle play. Kelly Kreitz with nine in the game now. Yeah, that's a good job backing her way down to the basket as well. Didn't make that first effort, but got open from a nice hesitation move. Erfer drives through the zone and scores. She's got seven. Herford says, I'm not going to shoot from outside like you want me to. I'm just going to beat you from the perimeter and get a good look inside. Ball's tipped out of bounds by Micah Aldridge. Micah gonna, has picked up a couple of fouls. I think she's going to take a seat right now. Coach Yant just keeps bringing them, doesn't he? He does. He does, not really, they've only gone eight, uh, three deep, so they've played with eight players, but he's rotated quickly, like you said. Zedike gets inside. Good help defense that time by Megan Horstman. And Zedek had her hands on the basketball. is out of bounds. That's great defense. We talked about how the Titans do a great job sliding in help. That time they got there early, 
planted both feet. That was a great job there by Megan Horstman. Again, one of those players coming off the bench, but doing the dirty work, playing great defense, getting in Zedike's way, and not fouling, but winning another possession back for the Titans. Second possession at Fairview's tried this 1-2-2 zone last time. Carson Erford split it, went to the rim, and scored. This is Erford with the basketball on top now. She wears number three. This horseman just made that good defensive play a moment ago. Glenn back over to the table to check back in. About four minutes left in the half. If her jump shot doesn't fall for her, Haley Hammer had it and lost it. Sprinkman with the offensive board. Yes, she was. Here's another shot that will go up. That's a three ball that will go for Caitlin Kimmett. She's got two of those this evening. 23 on the season. Pushes the lead to 13. Contributions from everywhere. Unbelievable right now from the Titans. Three ball back the other way. In the scramble for the rebound, we're going to get a foul. Kibbett had it and was fouled. That'll be two on Bethany Singer. Waiting for her to put it up on the board. Is that what it was against? It was. It's yes, it foul was. Good four. call, Evan. She becomes the first patchy with two fouls, and she uh, will head to the bench being replaced by... I'm trying to see who checked in the basketball game for her. Was it 35? I guess it was. Patience McDaniel checked into the basketball game. Actually, Singer stayed in the game, didn't she? Sure did. Yeah, Patience McDaniel, McDaniel checked in, but not for Singer. Three and a half minutes to go. Here in the first half, another three, and that one spun out. The rebound came to Allison Rhodes. And hustling back to knock the basketball out of bounds. Emma, uh, Carly Brinkman. Volleyball spike right there. Yeah, she, she knocked did. that one out of the air. Everybody on the OG Titan bench looked up and said, hey, she's open, and it came flying back in a hurry and knocked the ball out of bounds. Here's Rhodes. Zedite gets a three look. She hasn't had many looks, but she nailed that one. First really clean look she's had in the game, doubled her point total from three to six and cut the lead to 10. That was a much needed basket. Yeah, absolutely. That's a 36% free throw shooter. They just lost her on the inbound play and she made no mistake hitting from the corner. Titans under three minutes to go with a 10 point lead. It's been a quarter in which they put 13 points on the board. Pass inside, will draw a foul. And here goes Carly Brickman to the free throw line. On Z Dyke. Yep, gets her first foul. Brinkman, one for two from the free throw line in the first quarter. She has three points. Sophomore. Point four for her. They just keep them coming yeah. here at Ottawa Glandorf. Comes Carson Erford back into the game, and Caitlin Kimmett will get a break. Rims out, but Erford gets the rebound. Quickest person in the ball. Look, kind of looks tired right now as we get close to halftime. Not much effort on that rebound. Hazel and Erford's open in the corner. Where that zone flattens out a little bit. Now she's going to come up to the top of the circle. Ball Horseman. movement, yep. no reason to force anything up 11. This is Brinkman in the corner. She'll dribble back out against the zone that's really packed back in. Here's a three ball. That's a little bit long. <laughs> well, I guess who got the rebound? Somebody named Brinkman. Carly <laughs> just tracked another one down. Erford's going to get a three look. Glenn rebounds. And that missed for her. Chloe Glenn Hazelman ended up on the floor. We're headed the other way. Zedak gets another three, and she rings up another one. That was from deep as well. Yes, sir. Fairview taking advantage of those two players falling down, getting an open look in transition. Early possession points, I think, is what coaches are starting to call things like that. You get back before the defense gets ready to defend you. Erford, now Hazelman on top. Under 90 seconds to go, Chloe Glenn will take a three out of the corner. 
It is her night offensively. She's got 11 in the quarter and 13 for the game. Now, I understand the game plan, sagging back, making out of a Glendorf shoot from outside, but so far the Titans are either hitting those threes or they're getting offensive rebounds. Rose goes right to the inside area and scores. She and Glenn battle for the rebound. Who hit it out of bounds? Singer was involved too. And Chloe Glenn saves the basketball for her team. It's a great fight underneath from Glenn right there. Outmanned two versus one, still able to knock it off of Fairview and get another possession for the Titans up 11. Under a minute to go. Let's see how they choose to attack this zone. I think they went man to man after that last possession. See if the Titans with 11 point lead choose to play a last shot of the quarter situation. It's been a 17 to eight quarter for them. Hazelman dribbling the basketball out front. Singer's got a couple of fouls. She doesn't want to foul in this situation. Rhodes is going to walk out near Carly Brinkman. Brinkman penetrates deep and throws it back out to Hazelman. Hazelman to the rim. Spin shot. No. Rebound Horseman. They're just so active to the basketball this evening. They are. And again, you see the unselfish play right there. Horseman aware of 15 seconds on the clock. They still want the last shot. So she grabbed the rebound instead of going back up with it. And she's she going to get a three out of the corner that bounces out, but the rebound comes to Kreitz. Kreitz looks up, throws it, and will go short. Big second quarter, Ottawa Glandorf. They will take an 11-point lead after 16 minutes. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Halftime festivities almost complete here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Our free throws today has been sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Mark Shine, Evan Skilleter. Look at the stat page, Evan. Anything really jump off at you? Really, it's just turnovers. There's not much that separates these two teams other than the fact that Fairview has eight turnovers. Two, just two for Ottawa Glandorf. I say that. You also have to look at the offensive rebounds for the Titans. They have nine of them, and that is an issue for a team like Fairview, who's trying to force Ottawa Glendorf to shoot from outside. They're only three for ten, which three for ten is not bad as a team. But when most of those misses have resulted in offensive rebound rebounds, it defeats the game plan. Right, it defeats the purpose of making them shoot from outside. So if you want to continue with that game plan, okay, fine. Make sure you're turning around and boxing out because these Titans are crashing the boards and doing a really nice job getting second, third, and fourth opportunities for this uh, Would you think, uh, I, okay, Carrie Zedike, the, the senior for Fairview, she came up with two big three-point field goals in quarter number two. That was six of their eight points they had in the quarter. I just have the feeling this quarter she is going to try to take over and not have her senior season end tonight. I think you're absolutely right. And I think she's a player that maybe she should play off the ball a little bit. The Titans are doing a nice job crashing inside. So if Zedai could spot up outside while someone else takes it in, makes that defense collapse, and then kicks it out for an open look, they'll be in pretty good shape. She shoots right around 40% from outside for the season. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergil X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of alts, seamless spouting. And right away, we get a Titan turnover. They only turned it over, what, uh, three times in the first half? Four Just times? Twice. Twice, OK. Twice, yeah. Now three in the game. So let's see what Fairview does. This is a very solid basketball team. They're going to get a step back three. I told you, here she comes. It's like you were a coach one day or something. Well, not a very good one. But that cuts the lead to eight. Just had the feeling that seniors want to step up and she really did so. That's contact down inside and a power move will go to Katie Kaufman. She sat early with two fouls and they really didn't need to put her back in because they created so much separation on the scoreboard. So she comes in, gets her first point, uh, points of the game, excuse me, and now a chance for a three-point play. Lee's famous recipe, chicken free throw coming up. Kelly Kreitz, the foul went to her. That's her first. Rebound comes to Allison Rhodes. Ten-point lead. Singer set an illegal screen. Yeah, she tried to roll off the screen right before the contact, which obviously means your feet aren't set. You get called for that every time. And that's her third foul. That becomes a serious situation where they're better defensive players and certainly a starter for a team that doesn't play a lot of bench people. Glenn missed it. Rebound on the backside, however. 
I was trying to see what the pick. Allison Katie. Rhodes yeah. got hit in the face here. Katie Kaufman had the ball for a moment, got knocked out of her hands from behind. Rhodes is going to stay in the game, but uh, she's got some beak issues right now. Yeah, definitely. Lob goes out front. Kimmett, there's a pass down inside, and a really nice left-handed move by Katie Kaufman. You know what, I didn't score in the first half, but I've got four, we played 45 seconds in this half. Yeah, she got great position right there. You can't let her post up that deep and catch the ball right by the bucket. She's going to spin and score every time. Kerry Zedike tried to spin to the rim, and when she did so, she was fouled by Lily Hazelman, Lily's first foul of the game. And ball will be inbound on the sideline by Kelly Kreitz. Pass inside Rhodes, she got loose and scored. Allison Rhodes has five in the game now. She didn't score in quarter number two. Burford passed to the corner. Hazelman, ball fakes. Short jumper for her. Rebound Rhodes. Ten point lead. Coming off a screen that time was Haley Hammer. That's a lot of space. There's a deep shot that won't go, and Hazelman goes and gets the rebound. It's all right, though. Like you said, she's going to want to come out, fire some shots if she gets some open looks. We saw her hit one from that deep earlier in this game. Ball's tipped out of bounds. Here comes Micah Aldridge back in the game. And she will replace Chloe Glenn. Glenn had to play probably a few more minutes than she's accustomed to in that first half with Kaufman on the bench. But like you said, played really well. Went six of seven from the field, including her second three-pointer of the year. I always appreciate coming to Elida. They have the computerized stats. They give it at halftime when the game is over. Their, their minutes played uh, column didn't work properly in the first half. Here's a pass down inside. She got positioned again. And Katie Kaufman scored again. Too soft inside. Again, she got great position. If she gets posted up underneath that block, she is deadly. And we've seen her get two in a row from that exact position. Rhodes catches. Tried to get in the lane, but could not. Here's Zedike for three again. 15 now in the game for her. That's her the fourth, the th third three-point field goal, fourth three-point field goal. Hazelman able to get that route long errant pass and reset the offense. It leads down to nine. Now they're going to double yeah. Kaufman inside. They don't want that entry pass to go in. Singer went to help that time. Ball stripped loose. Wright's made a good play. It's a big possession right here for Fairview. You've got to stop after giving up a few buckets in a row. Got a three-pointer on your last possession. Singer lost the ball off her foot. Titans go down to the floor and get it. Held ball situation, and it will go to Fairview. Yep. Chloe Glenn back in the game. So is Carly Brinkman. We have five rebounds in the first half. Did a really nice job. We talked about her right before the half. Getting some offensive boards, playing good defense, couple steals, a couple points as well. Had four of them. Wrights couldn't get away from her defender, Erford. Zedike with a long three that time that Wrights tried to save and could not. I think this time the Titan boy basketball team was correct in saying air ball. They're now one for three on their air ball calls. <laughs> Coach McLaughlin won't be too happy about that, I'm sure. These young men had a really fine season there. Tournament action tomorrow night against Elmwood. Tried to pass it inside. That ball is tipped away and ends up in the hands of Haley Hammer. We'll go the other way. Step back shot. Bounces around. So Glenn went a long way to get the rebound and knocked her teammate down in the process of doing so. And then we get a foul. I think it's going to go against Rhodes. Is that fair? Yeah, it is. Yep. That'll be number two. Allison Rhodes tried to get the ball away from Hazelman. There was contact. Again, the last time Fairview won a district championship, 2005, ultimately lost in the regional to Patrick Henry team that was a state runner up that season. Hazelman's pass goes down to the baseline. Zedike hit it out of bounds off her knee. Back into the game will be Caitlin Kimmett. And she will be the inbounder. He's 
Hazelman coming off the screen, finally gets open. Rhodes got her on a mismatch, and she goes to the rim, and what are we going to get? Offensive foul. That's a good call. Bethany Singer took a gamble, though, with the three fouls that she had, but she accepted the charge, and we'll go the other way. Yeah, she was camped out under there. I think the, the complaint that Troy Ant will have is that she was too far underneath the basket, kind of in a dangerous position. But she was standing there. She did have her feet set. She did absorb the contact. And there is not an arc in high school basketball, right. so you don't have to worry about where those feet are located. Second team foul, the second half, Titans. Hazelman goes for a steal down inside, and she helps Coley Glenn wrestle the basketball away from Allison Rhodes. Hazelman just ends up everywhere defensively. That will be a Fairview foul, and I think Singer picked up foul number four. Yeah, she did. Just reached in right there. She disagrees, but referee right on top of that. Coach is going to leave her in. A lot of time left to this, but his team trails by nine, too. Here's a long pass out. Nope, it's going to be a five count. Hazelman couldn't find anybody to get the basketball into. Fairview hasn't really had much success offensively yeah. in the last few possessions, but they've made some stops. They're still within single digits. The game's gotten kind of stagnant for both teams the last couple of minutes offensively. Rhodes in the corner. That ball's blocked away, but Hammer gets it back. And Kreitz gets a three. Rhodes rebounds that one. Zedike step back three. She has another one. She's got three in the quarter, five in the game, and 18 points. Down to six. Titans haven't scored in a while. Big one there. Those step backs are tough, by the way. A lot of players make those look easy, but with your momentum going backward, trying to shoot that ball forward into the basket is no easy task. Brickman goes around Rhodes, lost the basketball, wrestles it back, and oh what a hustle play by her. Carly Brickman got points five and six at a much needed time. And right there, she had to keep the ball away from two defenders that were reaching in, ultimately kind of falling away from the basket, but put it right off the square and in. See, Doug thought about loading up another one. Here's Kreitz going all the way to the rim. Her shot will be short off the glass, but we're going to get free throws out of this one. Couple big ones for Kreitz, 68% free throw shooter this season on 84 attempts. Carly Brinkman gets her first foul and we're back to the free throw line for some Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Kelly Kreitz, nine points in the game. Katie Kaufman back into the basketball game. So is... Mike Aldrich. Splice that one. She becomes a double figure scorer with 10. Does Kelly Kreitz averages 14.1 a game? It's a seven point lead. Carson Erford. Still trying to keep that ball from going inside to Kaufman. Zedike matched up with her now. Here's a three look. That's a little bit long, and the rebound comes to Patience McDaniel. He tried to get in the lane that time and could not. This is Kreitz. Her shot is off the rim and rebounded by Caitlin Kimmick. Yeah, tough shot right there. Good defense as they stayed right in front of her. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Erford about lost the basketball. Got a shot up on the rim. That wouldn't go and then fouled on the rebound. Uh, be number five against the Titans. Not sure how she got through traffic to get the ball up on the rim and then didn't go for it. Looks like she lost possession and ended up falling right back into her arms. Seven-point lead. It's been a 12-7 quarter for... Fairview. With 90 seconds to go in quarter three, Kreitz will go up from six feet. But Carson Erford gets the rebound after her teammate tipped it to her. Yeah, that's a good job by Kaufman. They almost gave up that offensive board. Headed to the rim, and it's Carly Brinkman. She will draw a foul. She'll get to go to the free throw line. Who was that foul against? 
Looks like 14, which would be Kelly Kreitz, her second. Carly Brinkman struggled a bit at the free throw line this year, but she is two for four tonight. Has six points. Called seven. There's Horseman back in the game. Megan's had an impact on the game in quarter number two, as well as Chloe Glenn. And I think we're going to look at number 50. And yes, we are. Our Alexis Taylor at 5'11 will enter. She wears number 50 for the black and gold. Here's Carly Brinkman. Point eight for her. And she will get a much deserved break as Hazelman comes in. Brinkman's been all over the place, unafraid. She's just a sophomore, but shows tremendous effort. Talked about the offensive rebounds, but also penetrating, getting inside, drawing fouls. Back cut. And what do we got? It's Aldridge she just slid over a little yeah. bit. We've seen that a couple times. They do a nice job, the Titans, of recognizing when they need to slide over and help under the basket. But right there, Aldridge just a little slow to the spot. Well, they actually gave the foul to Horseman. Okay. But uh, you are correct in your analysis of what happened, but the foul went to Horseman, her first. Team's fifth, that ball tipped into the backcourt. This is Aldridge, though. Micah bounce passes across the lane, a rim running again, and Ford Glenn. There's that unselfish play from the Titans once again. Aldridge probably could have drawn a foul, but she took a look behind her right when she got inside and noticed Glenn would be all alone. It was 11 and a half, it's 11 now. Z-Dyke over penetrates, we're gonna get a held ball or a foul? It's gonna be held ball. And it will favor the Titans this time. Seems like just as Fairview looks like they're going to make a little bit of a run. The Titans do something turning defense into offense and really slowing down the momentum. Glenn, Hazelman. See what coach chooses to do. Does he play last shot? Skip pass around. Horseman had to look at it, turned it down. Here's the pass down inside. That shot's blocked inside by uh, Taylor, Alexis Taylor. And to the free throw line will go Katie Kaufman. She's had a big quarter, got six in the quarter. And she will get a pair of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw free throws. 55% free throw shooter on the season. This place gets really quiet when a tight really goes does. to the free throw line, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> it's like an awkward quiet. Well, Glenn's working with her knee brace a little bit, and she'll be replaced by Caitlin Kimmett with 26.3 to go here in the quarter. Seven points, and now eight, all in this quarter for Katie Kaufman. The lead's at 13, and you are correct. Just when you thought Fairview was back in it, Titans explode. The lead was 11 and a half. It's 13 now. Seedike, who's had a big quarter, but team pace to team still trails. Hazelman keep a good position with her. Take a deep one. Deep three, then short. Rebound Titans. Link to the fourth row. OG will take a 46-33 lead to the fourth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our instant replay site has been presented by Beckman Jewelers in Ottawa. Let us help you discover the perfect gift of love, affection, and appreciation. 46-33, only uh, three Fairview Apaches have scored this evening. Kerry Zedek has 18, Kelly Kreitz has nine, Allison Rhodes five. That's their big three, but they haven't right. got anything out of anybody else this evening. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Zedek averages 15, Kreitz 14.1, and Rhodes 14.8. So yeah, the, the players you expect yeah. to score are scoring, but not getting much elsewhere. And you can tell the Titans are really keying on those three. Improving that I can't add. Kelly Kreitz actually has 10 in the basketball game. Zedike for a deep three. Rebound, Chloe Glenn. She rips it away from Singer. Singer's got four fouls. Be careful there. Here's Hazelman. 
Remember, this Titan team beat Fairview by one earlier in the season, but the Titans also playing with two players, normally contributors on this team that are not playing tonight. Really this great. Three well is going to go up from Kimmett. Kicklin Kimmett, her third three-point field goal for nine points tonight. She has 21 of those before this evening, and she's lit the lamp up three times, pushes the lead to 16, its biggest. Back the other way, this three ball will go to Kelly Kreitz. She's got 13 now, her second three of the evening. 38th of the year for her. Hazelman just dribbled through the entire press. <laughs> and her coach says, take it out. And they went back out to midcourt to run their set. Up 13, don't need to be in a hurry, but obviously you want to keep your foot on the gas pedal. Pass inside Glenn, and she was wrestling inside with, I think it was Zedek, wasn't it? Let's see who the foul goes to. Zedek could drop down to help out. Be seven against Fairview second. anyway. Yep. Free throw time, Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws this evening. They're in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call them for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken where home style happens here. Chloe Glenn. Makes the free throw. That's her first trip to the free throw line tonight. She's got 16 points in the game. She averages 8.4. Got another one. 17 for her. And the lead is 15. The winner will get Delphus Jefferson on Saturday afternoon. That'd be a good matchup as well, either way. Jefferson, a fantastic team. Ludike working against Hazelman. Can't get loose. Three out of the corner. And that's one of Caitlin Kimmett. You know, you look up because you're all set to run the fast break, and she forgot to secure the basketball. And Lady's had a really nice basketball game as a sophomore, and that time the ball just got escaped her a little bit. Hammer looks inside, and we're going to get a held ball situation. Arrow favors Ottawa Glandorf. That was Brinkman in there getting the steal. Another possession for the Titans. One by Brinkman. Full court pressure coming from Fairview. And what? Kicked, kicked the ball. ball. Yeah, kicked the ball. Yep. Try it again. Fairview champions of the Green Meadows Conference this year with a 7-0 mark. Ottawa Glandorf won the Western Buckeye League. They were 9-0. Ball gets away from Titans. This will be a three that'll go up, bounce around. It was a good look that time, but the rebound was secured by Kaufman. Hazelman through traffic. She just <laughs> motors around. As an analyst, yeah. I've been sitting over here trying to figure out, well, what is the, the toughest thing about the Titans? I don't know if uh, I can tell you. That, I think it's all tough. They're, they're really good at a lot of different things, aren't they? They really are. Yep. They're unselfish. Right they, now they work hard. They crash the boards, offensive rebounds, steals. Defensively, they always know where to be. They're always happy to help. Right now, they're headed to the free throw line. This will be a one and one opportunity for Brinkman. These famous recipe chicken free throw is a little bit hard, but Chloe Glenn goes and gets the rebound and muscles right back up and scores. 17 19 in the game for her. Again, good defense from Hazelman, not allowing any space to Zedike. Hammer looks, finally finds Kreitz. This pass is down inside. Rhodes is going to muscle up, but she's fouled inside by Glenn, I think. Might have been Aldridge coming from behind. Yeah, we better wait and make that call, shouldn't we? That is good, yeah. Aldridge. Yeah, good call. And that's another one of those plays. Again, we said that they're, they're happy to help. Aldridge just noticed there was a player that was posted up, so she just sprinted from up top down to try to challenge that. Obviously, a foul, that's not the result you want, but it's still that willingness to go help, to recognize when you can come off your assignment and knock the ball away or make it tough on the other team. Allison Rhodes makes a Lee's Famous Recipe free throw and a second one. She's got seven points in the game and cuts the lead to 15. 
Here's the pass is going to go ahead. Altrich to the rim. Left-handed finish. Here's a three. That'll bounce, bounce, bounce. Eventually ends up in the hands of Zedike, and she will draw a foul. Called it shooting, so she'll have two free throws, but Titans. Like you said earlier, you don't want to take your foot off the gas necessarily, and they have not done that here in the fourth quarter, doing a fantastic job pressuring on defense, getting to the rim on offense. And we saw a couple transition baskets as well. Billy Hazelman had picked up her third foul after the rebound by Z Dyke, who then makes a Lee Samus Rescue Chicken free throw for her 19th point. And her coach takes timeout with 5.06 to go. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tyson's replays are made possible by Beckman Jewelers in Ottawa. Let us help you discover the perfect gift of love, affection, and appreciation. Appreciate our instant replays this evening. Our scoreboard tonight has been sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of Structure Pergola X, Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. That timeout was taken by Fairview. They still have two timeouts left. OG is not calling a timeout in the basketball game. Each team are shooting one on ones right now, and the arrow does favor Fairview, should that be a situation that uh, we have to deal with. They backed their press off. The Titans have done a nice job breaking it down and getting some easy looks out of it. It's because they were going to trap in the half court, just didn't quite get to it that time. And right to the rim, and finishing with the left hand on a really nice drive by the Alter. Just her second basket. Both of them have come in the fourth quarter. Oh, my goodness. That, Look at that. That's going to be an offensive foul as Allison Rhodes lowered his shoulder and ran into Chloe Glenn. Glenn gets up with a big smile on her face after accepting that contact. And then Coach says, you get to come and sit down. You get a nice rest for doing that. And she is replaced by Katie Kaufman. That was a great job right there. She knew that player was going to spin inside. She just set her feet, absorbed the contact. Pass inside. Aldridge rebounds, puts that one back up, and oh. Oh, I was close. Both games now, Evan, I'm close. I just can't. I did, I did protect my coffee. Cup, that was right. the closest one so it far. Was. Yeah, that was close. I thought you were going to get that yeah, one. Me too. Carly Brinkman. Of course, when I played, no one would pass me the basketball. There was a reason for that. That shot's missed by Erford. Zedek will head the other way. Singer's going to be open for a three. Erford rebounded the basketball. She's dribbling it up under pressure and gets it back. Well, at four minutes to go in this one, halfway through quarter number four. That'll be a foul out front. Who do they get? Because if it's Singer, she's done, and they did. <laughs> Bethany Singer will foul the basketball game. She is not a scorer for this team. She averages just three and a half points per game. She did not score this evening. Her contributions come from the defensive end and moving the basketball around, and she just fouled out. She'll be replaced by Patience McDaniel to the free throw line. Carson Erford leaves famous recipe chicken free throws, and it's double bonus time. Eight points for her. She had five in the opening quarter, seven at halftime. Still, talked about this earlier, still only three players have scored for Fairview. Again. And the lead has gotten to 20. Did not expect this, Evan. No, nor did I, but this Titans team really came out. And from the opening tip, put so much pressure on this Fairview offense. Z Dyke splashes a three ball. That gives her 22 points on the game, 21 points on the game. Cuts the lead to 17. That young lady can play. She can indeed. Not sure what her plans are for next season. Not going to take that one away. I thought they would. On the rebound effort, Katie Coffin went through the back of a. Fairview player. We should get free throws at the other end. That's the eighth team foul. And what are we going to get? We're going to get a Titan timeout. Let's take a break, too. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN.
Our free throws tonight are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. And we're going to get some Kerry Zedike free throws. It's like a one and one. Hit every part of the rim and wouldn't go down. Rebound to Brinkman. Coach Yant took that timeout. Erford goes all the way to the rim and lost the basketball. Nope, she was fouled. That's why she lost it. Yeah, definitely a reach in foul right there. Good yeah, catch by the referee. Kelly Kreitz picks up foul number four for her, 5'11 junior. With nine points, Erford goes to the free throw line. And she becomes a double figure scorer. Another Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. Again, she's five for six from the free throw line this evening. Upping her 64% average on the season. Another one of those players that just does everything for the Titans. Good defender, moves the basketball, can score. And you don't know she's a freshman how about how she plays. I know it. That foul's going to go against OG. What did they get for that one? That was Hazelman, who now has four fouls all of a sudden. And then a free throw line. Seedike again. This will be the last one and one of the game, and she makes that one. Titans now have nine team fouls. Fairview's been over 10 for the last couple. Makes them both. 23 in the game for her. Talked about how quiet it can get in this gym. It, <laughs> it does. Certainly that right now. Here's a steal. We're going the other way with Z Dyke, and she ball fakes, hoping to draw contact and doesn't. 25 for her, well above her 15.4 average player of the year in the Green Meadows Conference this year. Hazelman's going to weave around through traffic with a 15 point lead. And they are in the layup and free throw mode right now. Fairview will try to foul and get back into this game, or if they see the writing on the wall here. Erford started at the rim and realized what the, the set coach had him in right there, backed it up, and they're going to do the same thing here with Brinkman. Two minutes to go in the basketball game. There's the foul that we're looking to get. Three on Z Dyke. Zedek's third foul puts Erfer back to the free throw line where she's made a living here in quarter number four. And left it a bit short that time. She's got a sub waiting for her at the bench. She can make this one. Which she does. Point 12 for her, and she'll be replaced by Micah Aldrich. With a 16 point lead. Fairview needs to go quickly. I assume Z Dyke comes down and just tries a, a pull up three to get something going. Bounce pass inside is stolen away by Brinkman. Under two minutes to go. Brinkman's had a good basketball game. Scored eight points, but her contributions have been far significantly oh, above that. Absolutely. That's the name of the game for this Titan program. They recognize hard work and effort from all over the place. Allison Rhodes draws a foul. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for TV44 to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewers supporting TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable the airing of this game and other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTOW.com and click Donate. Free throw good that time by Brinkman. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. We're going to get some subs into the basketball game. Sydney Merritt's in the basketball game. So is Alexis Taylor for Fairview. So Z Dyke will head to the bench with 25 points this evening in the final game of her high school career. We mentioned in the first game of our doubleheader. This is the toughest part about yeah. tournament time when it's 
Time for the seniors to exit for the last time. Good career for her, of course. Rebound on the backside comes to Caitlin Kimmett. Titans got several subs at the bench, too. They'd like to get in the basketball game. I got a question for you. Talking about Titans who have played well. Name one that hasn't played well tonight, because I can't name one. Seems like everybody who's hit the floor has uh, made a positive Scott Mag. <laughs> Scott Mag has not played very well tonight. Assistant coach. Maybe he might have coached well, though. Man. Broadcast partner of ours, yeah. good guy. Absolutely. Titans is playing pitch, pitch and catch on the perimeter until they get a shot inside by Carly Brinkman. She's already got 10 points in the game. It's going to get a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Titans have shot a lot of those free throws here in this quarter. She's got 10 in the game, trying to get to 11 or 12. That's a little bit hard. Into the basketball game. Uh, Kayla Mavis into the basketball game. Also in is number 10, that's Madison Sharp. Teepers put in 30 for Teepers. How about that? The Trojans put in, uh, let me see, that 33, Greta Liebrich. 21 is in the basketball game as well. That's Olivia Grothaus. There's a rebound that comes back to OG. And because I'm comfortable with you, Mark, yeah. I'll correct you. It's the Apaches, the Fairview what Apaches. Did I say? What did I say this uh, time? We had the knows? Thunderbirds, the, uh, the Trojans the Birds, in yeah, there. Yeah, everything in there, I know. Yeah, that's all right. Lee Breck just uh, is in the basketball game as well. She wears number 20. We're going to get a timeout to get a couple more subs Birds, in the basketball Birds. game. Savannah Wrecker's in the game. She wears uh, number 13. Did we get them all into the game? I hope we did by now. I think we got everybody just looking around the floor for both teams who have checked into the basketball game with 42.8 to go. Buses chant. The old classic. Start the buses, but I'll tell you what, this Apache's team with a fantastic season. This year, 20 and three, coming into tonight, 20 and four after this one. But like you said, or sorry, 19 and four. Like you said, the conference title in the Green Meadows Conference. And get to see the end of a couple of really great careers, especially from 1,000 point scorer Carrie Zedike. This is Sharp with the basketball. She's going to pitch it up on top. Timmy, that ball goes down inside. This is Taylor. She gets doubled up. There's a three ball that's going to go up for Madison hey. Sharp. How about that? Madison Sharp, the sophomore, steps in and has a chance to splash a three in the district. And Ottawa Glandorf will take a 64 to 49 victory over the Fairview Apaches. That will push uh, Ottawa Glandorf's record to 21 and three on the season. They were a perfect 9 and 0 in the Western Buckeye League. Fairview will finish their season at 19 and 5. They were 7 and 0 and perfect in their conference as well. A lot of different teams. Uh, lots of teams. I've done it again. A lot of Titans had big basketball games this evening, Evan. Yeah, absolutely. This is a team that we talked about it throughout the whole broadcast, but they do such a great job of every element of the game and contributions from everyone from scoring to rebounding to steals to uh, offensive boards and just a, a tremendous effort all around. We didn't even mention the assist column. Um, some really great passes as well. So a fantastic job for a Titans team that is going to be a really tough out in this tournament if they continue to turn defense into offense and work their way through the bracket. We just got a, a stat page handed to us. I'll go through a couple of uh, numbers I have and see what jumps off off, off the page to you. Ottawa Glendorf quarter scores 15, 17, 13, and 18. Fairview quarter scores 13, 8, 12, and 16 tonight. Uh, they did have 25 points, did Fairview from Kerry Zedike. Uh, they got uh, 12, I guess, 13 from Kelly Kreitzen. They got seven from Allison Rhodes. They got a three ball at the end from Madison Sharp. Again, only four players scored in three of them throughout most of the contest. Big night for Chloe Glenn. She had 19, 10 for Brinkman, 12 for Carson Erford, eight for, uh, let me see, Ka Caitlin Kimmett. Katie, Caitlin Kimmett had nine and eight for Katie Kaufman tonight as well. 
How about anything jump out at your stat pages, rebounding, anything like that? Yeah, actually, 29 total rebounds for the Titans. 14 of those were offensive, 15 were defensive. Almost identical numbers, offensive and defensive rebounding. They did such a nice job crashing the boards. And really, there's not one player that stands out in the rebounding column. It's just a great effort across the board for a team that does, like we said, all the little things, and, and they, like to, uh, they, they like to play hard. And they all yep. buy into that system. They all buy into this team's success. The athletic director, Mr. Dave Evans, got us all set up again this evening. A very busy man. He and his staff do a great job here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Our sponsors this evening had been uh, Ultimate Outdoor Ohio, Beckman Jewelers, and Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Our crew here in the uh, fac fac facility this evening, Jacob O'Neill and Kelsey Beimer, back at the station, Megan Sherrick and Nick Fraley. The Outer Atlanta of Titans will move into the district finals. That'll be Saturday afternoon here at 2 p.m. You'll be able to see it Sunday on WOSN. They do so with a 64-49 win over the Fairview Apaches. You're watching high school basketball at WOSN. <laughs>